All right, um, here is the lesson on piecewise functions. So um, this is <clears throat> another one, just like uh, uh, earlier when we talked about absolute value equations and inequalities. This is another one that used to be uh, an Algebra 1 uh, covered topic, but they have since moved it to Algebra 2. And so it's no longer taught in Algebra 1, and so this is uh, <clears throat> the first time we're really having to kind of go over it here in Algebra 2. But uh, piecewise functions generally... Um, you know, some of your basic ones are just linear equations that um, are kind of fragmented. So um, when we see <clears throat> here that this function has um, a, a certain behavior to it in uh, a certain domain, and then it behaves differently in a different domain. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, you see, can see what this looks like here. Uh, notice how you have... Um, the x minus 2 when x is less than or equal to 0. So I have uh, it behaving a certain way up until uh, the line reaches equal to 0 because that's less than or equal to 0. And so there's that. And then up, it picks up up here when x is greater than 0 in, in, a, in a completely different function. It's now going to x plus 1. So um, that's the, the thing about piecewise functions is they are... Uh, basically pieces of functions. So you have a piece here and then a piece up here um, that are fragmented. The only thing that you got to pay attention to is pay attention to the domain. So that tells you where, um, you know, a certain function will start or stop. Um, and then also we need to pay attention to the equal to or if there's not an equal to. Uh, one that's got a line underneath it, an equal to line, will be a filled in dot, a solid dot. And one that uh, it does not have the equal to line underneath um, will be an open dot. So we got to be, be careful when we're plotting these graphs that we do pay attention to the dots on there, as well as making sure that this ends at the appropriate spot. So we're going to go ahead and um, look at some of these. So the first thing we're going to do is just uh, evaluate. Now, uh, when you have a piecewise function, you have to understand that you have, obviously, different pieces and different domains. So when you're trying to evaluate, you need to uh, figure out, um, do I plug it in the first one or do I plug it in the second one? Or in this case, there's a third one. So when I see f is 0, first of all, it tells me I'm using the f of x function. And then 0, I have to see, okay... Um, is 0 less than or equal to 1, or is it greater than 1? Okay, well, obviously 0 is less than or equal to 1, so I know I'm going to be using this, and I simply just plug in 0. 3 times 0 is 0, and then minus 1 is negative 1. f of 1, now, um, you've got to be careful here, because... So which one is it going to fit in? Well, this one's less than or equal to 1, and since we have 1... Um, that would be it. It would not be the second one because this is everything that's greater than 1. So it'll be the first one, and we're, so we're going to plug 1 in. Uh, 3 times 1 is 3, minus 1 is 2. Uh, and then 5, uh, 5 does put us over uh, greater than 1 now, so actually we're going to use this uh, function here to uh, plug in 5. So the 5 is going to go in for x there. And so basically I have 1 minus 2 times 5. Well, 2 times 5 is 10, so 1 minus 10 would be negative 9. Last, uh, we're not going to do uh, all of these here. Just going to do a couple of them uh, in the G one because it's essentially the same thing. But again, evaluating, you have to figure out, okay, G of X or G of 0. No, I know I need to use the G function. And 0, where does 0 uh, end up? Well, is it less than or equal to negative 3? Uh, no. Uh, is it between negative 3 and 1? That seems like a likely fit here. 0 is between uh, negative 3 and 1. So in this case, there's nothing for you to plug it into. It's simply saying every number that is between negative 3 and 1 is simply just 2. So the answer would just be 2. <clears throat> now, negative 3, these are, this is another one where you got to kind of be careful here because negative 3 is here, but you have to understand that this... Um, this is bigger than negative 3, whereas this is less than or equal to negative 3. And since we have negative 3, it should actually fit in this 
uh, 1 here. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Minus 1 would be negative 10. And then let's just pick one that's greater. Uh, let's do g of 3 here. g of 3. 3 would be in the greater than or equal to 1. So 3 would go here. So negative 3 times 3 is just negative 9. That's how you evaluate pretty basic stuff there. Again, this used to be an Algebra 1 skill, so I don't anticipate too many issues uh, with this. Now the graphing piece. Now it gets into a little bit more, um, you know, we got to you know be careful here a little bit. And so um, I am going to, these are blank graphs. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw for the sake of this, uh, I'm going to draw some axes in here. So I'm going to draw, um, you know, an X axis or a, well, that's a Y axis, but then uh, let's draw an X axis in here. I know it's not centered, but that's okay. And so I'm going to put these in here just, just so we have <clears throat> an axis. Let's see, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and so on. And just to save ourselves some time here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this now. While well, I don't have anything there, I'm going to uh, copy it and paste it over here just so we already have uh, these drawn in there. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and graph this and let me change colors just so that we don't we know which the axis are. So, uh, and you just graph these basically, uh, you know, at uh, one at a time. Uh, so I have a slope, uh, I have a, an equation here of negative four X. Um, notice with the, the linear equation, it doesn't have a Y intercept uh, there's no, if, if this is linear, um, it's, you know, y equals, this would be like in a y equals and then mx plus b. Well, there's no b, <clears throat> so there's no y-intercept, so that means it's zero. So it's going to go uh, negative 4x. So I'm going to graph negative 4x, a slope. So starting at zero, uh, I'm going to go uh, net down four. Negative four is negative four over one or down four over one. Um, so we got to be careful here uh, because this uh, is only for functions that are less than or equal to zero. So essentially, if I were to draw my line going through zero and then down four over one and then kind of draw my line like that, like this, if that's my line, that would be the line. That would be negative 4x. That's, that's a graph of negative 4x. But um, it, it, if it's less than or equal to 0, then it's only going to be this part. Because when I get over here, now I'm getting uh, x is bigger than 0 because we're on the positive side. So this doesn't actually exist in this piecewise function because it only wants it less than. Less than is left. Greater than is right. Less than is left. Greater than is right. Less than is left, so I need to go this way. I need to pay attention here, too. Because it has the equal sign, then my dot should be filled in, which it already is. But now I need to kind of redraw this because the line should only go left like that. So notice how I do have a slope of negative 4 down 4 over 1, and it is going through 0, and it stops at 0 because this tells me that this needs to stop at 0. Now, um, I have this function that's greater than 0, um, and that's at 4. So I know uh, because there is no equal to sign, uh, I know I'm going to have an open dot. And in this case, uh, it's just a number. So if you remember back to um, types of <clears throat> equations here, with, because it has no x, this is a constant. So this is just a straight line greater than 0 uh, like that. So I know that this is uh, a little bit kind of hard to understand. What I always tell kids to do, because you'll often be using pencil, so what I always tell kids is to draw the line like it's supposed to be and then just use your eraser to erase what it isn't. So like I could have drawn this whole line and then just erased you know, what was not supposed to be there based on the domain. Um, and that's one way to do it if you want to do it just using pencil. Over here, <clears throat> so same thing. Uh, this one starts at two, so we gotta be careful there. Uh, and this is all this is all weird and wonky. I'm gonna 
just switch this around so the negative x goes first and then the positive 4, just so we have um, it in slope-intercept form. So here's what I was telling you. Graph the line. Graph the line as it's supposed to be. So like, I'm just going to graph negative x plus 4. So I'm going to go to 4. I'm going to graph it here. I'm going to do negative x, which is negative 1 slope. So it's going to kind of go like this. And so I'll have a line going like this. And one going the other direction as well. Like that. Now, what you can do <clears throat> and what I can't do is you can just erase. So I know that this function right here is only valid if it's less than 2, if x is less than 2. So here's x is less than 2. So essentially, it is only valid from here left. Remember, less than is left. So uh, less than 2 would be right here and then this way. So I'm going to, what you can do if you have pencil is just go to two here and then just simply erase the line that you have over here and then change this to an open dot since it doesn't have the equal sign, equal to sign, um, it's gonna be an open dot. But I am gonna have to redraw this so that I go from two, I have an open dot and then I just go like that. So now I have um, a function that um, at two or less than two uh, behaves that way. And now when I have greater than or equal to two, I have a completely different line. This is gonna be a solid dot. Uh, but remember, draw. it's easier just to draw the line as, as it is. So if I draw, there's my y-intercept right there. It has a positive one slope. So it's gonna go, you know, one like this, that way and then one like this, this way. Um, and now it, it is only valid when it's greater than two, so it's only gonna be valid right, greater than is right. So I'm only, I should only see this part right here. Now what I would do with my pencils, I would just simply erase the rest of this and leave that part there. I don't, I can't obviously use an eraser here with, uh, with notability. So I'm going to just redraw the line starting at two, and it should be a solid dot because it's an equal to. Oh, and I messed that up already. It should be right here, yep. And then uh, it goes up like that. And there's my inequality. It is much easier to just draw the line all the way through the way it is and then go back and erase it than it is to try and figure out where the line will be in space. Okay, I want to do one more just so you can kind of get the hang of this. Um, let me um, try and um, copy. Let me, oh, I could just copy the whole. Let me just copy the whole thing here, and then I can erase it later. So let me copy this. Uh, duplicate. Let's go this way. Just so I have lines here. Oops. Okay, and now I'm gonna erase my old stuff. There you go. Uh, this one's got three. Um, so again, just do one at a time. I have a two X if less the X is less than um, a negative two. So again, just draw the line of 2x. Just just draw the whole line. Don't worry about the domain. It is much easier to go back and erase than it is to try to figure out where it's supposed to be in space. So draw 2x. Since there's no y-intercept, I know that it starts at, uh, or it goes through the origin. 2x is going to be a slope of up 2 over 1. So this is how it's going to look. And now I'm just going to draw that line. All okay. right. So on there, um, we're going to now go um, and erase, essentially what you would do is erase um, where the domain isn't. This, again, only occurs when x is less than negative 2. So in this case, it's only going to be less than negative 2. So just this, the only thing I need is this little blip right here. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to erase everything else here. Uh, no, I don't want to erase the axis. Let's see if I can get in here without, nope, without erasing, there you go. 
All that's going to be there is this, this little blip like there. There is my, oh, and it's an open dot because it's greater than and not, uh, not greater than or equal to, or sorry, less than. So it's an open dot and then this way. So there's one of my functions. The next one is going to be between negative two and two. I simply just have a value of two. It is a constant. So a value of two would go like this, uh, across like that. Um, but it is only valid between negative two and two. So it is only going to be valid from here to here. Whereas this side here, because I have an equal to, will be a solid dot. On this side over here, there's no equal to, so this will be an open dot. So basically, it's right there. So if you had your pencil, you would just erase everything left of two and everything right of two. I don't have that luxury uh, to do that. So I'm just going to go from two, negative two, uh, with a closed dot over to positive two with an open dot. And now I got that one. And now <clears throat> I get negative 2x. Negative 2x um, is going to be going down. Uh, so negative 2x would start from the origin, go down 2 over 1 like that. And so I'm going to keep going backwards 2. And so I get a line that looks like this. And it's only when x is greater than 2. So just like the one over here, greater than 2 greater than or equal to 2, is just this little blip over here. Uh, so everything else would be erased except for that little blip there. I don't have the luxury of just erasing. So I'm just going to go through and, and then draw it going this way, like that. And so there's my piecewise. That's it. Uh, we don't get really into word problem piecewise functions, so I wouldn't worry too much about that right now. Uh, but that's how we do piecewise functions. So hopefully, hopefully that... Uh, that helps. All right.